Hello, Ruby and I would like to welcome you to this edition of Ask an Expert. In a couple of minutes, our in-house financial expert, Gordon Nicholl, should be arriving. Thanks very much for coming all the way to meet us at our office this afternoon. You've been my financial advisor for the last 20 or 30 years now, yeah. so I can really vouch for the fact that you are an expert. I'd just like to ask you a few questions uh, concerning people's financial plans in the future, so maybe that can help them. When is the best time to start thinking about starting a pension? I'm glad you asked me that one. That's a very simple one, um, at the earliest possible opportunity. The basic maths is very, very simple. It's the compounding effect of being invested over time that gives you the best return. Every 10 years or slightly less that you delay making pension contributions actually doubles the cost of how much you have to put in at a later date. So even though it's only 10 pounds a month, 20 pounds a month when you get your first job, um, it's imperative to get into that savings vehicle at the earliest possible opportunity. So by starting five years early, you might be able to retire seven years early or something like that, maybe? Yeah, uh, entirely possible. I mean, one of the best feelings that I get as an advisor is having harangued people for donkey's years to put more money into their pensions, is to get to a point maybe when they're, well, let's say your age, um, 57, I think, um, and say, well, actually, if you want to retire now, you can do. You've done all the hard work. The choice is yours, and the fact then that you decide to keep on working is a choice, it's not an obligation. I think that's a tremendous position to be in, and I love getting people to that point. Another phrase that's banded around the financial world, um, which maybe people don't understand, what is a financial review? Financial review can take a variety of formats. Um, from my point of view, what we offer is holistic advice, which is encompassing everything that, that might impinge on somebody's financial situation. So whether it be pensions, life assurance, investments, mortgages maybe. Now, from our point of view, the way that we, we operate as, uh, as a business, um, we offer a review on an annual basis. With some people I sit down two, three, four times a year because their they're, they're requirements are a bit more complex, they're constantly evolving. We would recommend that once you engage with a financial advisor for anything, that each year you take a rain check on things and see how things are progressing. It's a lot easier to make adjustments and change plan if you're aware of any shortfalls at an early stage. If you leave it five, ten years before you, you hit the next review, it might be too late to actually change things to get to where you want to be. I'd also recommend that as an imperative, big life changing events, big lifestyle events, things like marriage, moving house, family weddings, might be a good time to just do a check on the finances. We, we can do focused reviews, so if somebody only wants to talk about pensions, that's what we'll talk about, that's their choice. We will point out there are other areas of need, but if that's what their, their, their requirement is at that point in time. So it's very much guided by what the individual wants, but as I say, I think the, the way that we operate is, is fundamental to everything that we do and sort of the positions that people end up in, like yourself after all this time that we've known each other, um, that you, know, you, you get the opportunity to sit down with trusted face-to-face -face advice regularly. A, a lot of people are in touch with Sanderson estate agents trying to buy property because they want to use it for their pension. Do you think buying property is a good idea for pension provision? I think... As part of a, a, a diversified strategy, um, we always look to diversify strategies with clients. Um, property has its place. I think it's become a bit less attractive in recent times, particularly for the one-off purchase, so the, the casual investor. Um, I think if you're a builder and you can afford to do all the maintenance and all the repairs and alterations yourself, that's, that's maybe a different scenario. But for your average uh, individual, like myself, who hasn't got a clue about anything to do with houses, um, it can be a bit risky. You've got the risk of 
tenancy voids, you've got the risk of bad tenants who might damage your property, uh, and particularly if you're not sort of close by to keep a, an eye on the property. The risk of somebody running off with unpaid rent and having to pursue them through the courts, and if you're entirely reliant on that rental income come retirement, a void period, or a period when you have to repair the property, it actually seriously damages your financial well-being. Mm. The other thing with property is the government has made it progressively less attractive now for individuals to invest in because of taxation changes that they've imposed with um, stamp, duty land, uh, stamp duty land tax with uh, capital gains tax. Um, plus, you don't get the, the, the pension contribution relief. If you, if you do the basic maths, you know, if you're a 20% taxpayer, you pay £80, the government give you £20 back. That's a 25% guaranteed investment return, just for putting your money somewhere. If you're a higher rate taxpayer, you pay £60 effectively and get 40 That's a guaranteed 66% investment return. I don't know anything else that offers that. Uh, and particularly with the flexibility now that surrounds taking your benefits from a pension, I think there's far less reason to be dubious about having a proper pension as part of your pension arrangements. And by all means, have some property, whether it be commercial, whether it be residential. But diversification is very important because different asset classes perform differently in different circumstances. As well as pension provision and, and, and investment for the future in that respect, yeah. one of the big things that's coming up now, particularly with a lot of people that I'm dealing with who are like 60 plus, mm -hmm. is long term health care if they have to go yeah. into nursing homes and things like that. And I've seen people have to sell their houses and, yeah. and, and all their assets have, have gone to the health care rather than to be passed on into the family. Is yeah. that something that you can help people with at all? Yes, uh, amongst my many sins, I'm a fully accredited uh, advisor with the Society of Later Life Advisors, SOLA. I haven't got a pin badge on today. Um, I didn't know you were going to ask me that question. but. Um, it, it's something that is an area of increasing concern. The reality is that we have a social care budget that isn't being properly funded. More people are living longer and more people are living longer in care. So they're being forced to use the resources to pay for that. And it, it's vitally important that people in that situation, either going into care, recently in care, uh, with relatives in care, take proper financial advice. Currently, fewer than one in 10 people going into care take any kind of financial advice and of those the ones who are self-funding which is about 40 percent of people going into care one in four will run out of money while they're in care that causes a huge problem because does the care home keep them on on much reduced local government tariff rates which are about two-thirds of what the private sector charge or do they move them out and that can be a traumatic event for an older person who has already moved out of their home uh, maybe have to experience loss of contact with close friends, maybe have to move quite a long way to, to move into this particular home. And then to have settled in, made friends perhaps with staff and other residents, to be moved out again when you're increasingly infirm, that, that can be a very, very significant life event for people. So I, I, I'm, I'm passionate about this. Um, it's something I believe is underprovided for. People really need to acknowledge that there is a, a deep need for proper financial advice. Well, thanks very much for letting me put you literally on the spot this afternoon no to answer those questions. Yep. I know that um, you've got a lot of customers in this area. Yep. If people want to speak to you, does it matter where they're located at the moment and how can they contact you to make no. some, ask you some questions? Not at all. Um, I have got clients literally all over the UK. Uh, in fact, a lot of them seem to move further away from me. I've got one who's moving from the northwest down to the south coast of Devon. Um, which is a bit of a, a nuisance, but literally I've got clients in Dover, I've got them in London, I've got them in South Wales, I've got them in Scotland. The bulk of my client contacts are in the North West and in North Wales, um, but have car will travel. We, we come to, to visit our clients either at their place of business or at their homes. Um, nobody needs to travel to see us. So okay. I'm quite happy to, uh, to meet and, and just stress the point that any initial consultation, there's no obligation, there's no cost. Okay, what number can people reach you on? Either come in through yourselves or yeah. um, my mobile number is 07760 881921. Thanks very much, Gordon. Yep. Thanks very much for coming along. My pleasure.